so I'm going to the beginning. All right, so uh, I'd like to uh, begin by uh, thanking the organizers for uh, such a wonderful symposium during such a difficult period of time and for giving me a chance to uh, speak. So the work I'll be talking about, the theory part was done in collaboration with my former uh, graduate student postdoc, who is now at IOP, uh, Qun Jiang, and Shi Dai, who is on his way from Hong Kong University of Science and Technology to UCSB. And uh, we've uh, collaborated with various uh, experimental groups that I won't uh, uh, go through uh, each uh, individually. Um, so my plan is the following. I'll explain what is uh, a quantum anomalous vortex and uh, how it came to light in the search for Marana zero modes, uh, vortex Marana zero modes in ion based superconductors. And after I accomplish that, which I hope uh, within the time limit I can, I'll uh, describe some uh, new uh, experiments and theories that really uh, put uh, additional evidence uh, for finding the uh, quantum anomalous vortex. So what is a quantum anomalous vortex? If we put a, a magnetic impurity in a superconductor, the breaking of time reversal symmetry will cause the Yushiba uh, Rosenov states to appear. However, these are not vortices and to have a vortex in a type two superconductor, you need an external magnetic field. So what we found is this uh, conventional folklore changes in a fundamental way in a S-wave superconductor, let's say with strong spin orbit coupling. In that case, if you put a magnetic impurity in the superconductor, there will be a spontaneous quantized phase winding develops uh, in the superconducting order parameter and therefore a spontaneous vortex, if you wish, uh, of the supercurrent without applying external magnetic field. And the role of the magnetic field is played by the spin orbital exchange field. And we call such vortices quantum anomalous vortex. And it is in fact, formally speaking, a superconducting analog of the quantum anomalous Hall effect uh, in which uh, you take a topological insulator thin film and dope with magnetic ions and produce a quantum anomalous Hall state without uh, external magnetic field. So the quantum anom anomalous vortex per se has nothing to do with Marana zero mode. Uh, however, it came to light uh, because of the search for Marana zero modes in ion based superconductors. So uh, let me begin immediately with uh, what is a um, vortex excitation in a type two superconductor and what are vortex core states. And here I have a vortex uh, which is a deformation of both uh, of the amplitude to zero of the pairing field and then a quantized phase winding around it so that I have a circulating uh, supercurrent around the, vorti uh, the vortex. And in the vortex, I have the vortex core states. Now, uh, Caruli, DJ, and Matricon did the calculation and showed that these vortex core states are quantized and they're quantized by half odd integers. And it's very easy to understand this half out integer because if you take a particle and go around the vortex, you pick up an angular quantum number that is the angular momentum quantum number and plus half of the vorticity. And that's why it's always half out integer. And in particular, it does not include the zero energy state. And these are uh, observed of course in Niobium disinonide where this is a curve away from the vortex. And as you go to the uh, center of the vortex, you see this vortex core states. It's important to know that Niobium disinonide is in the BCS limit. That is the gap is much less than the Fermi energy. So these in-gap states are actually continuous. And this is a, a very nice calculation done by Bardeen. And it's a very interesting paper to read where he calculated these states and showed that it is a continuous states uh, interpolating between one gap and the other gap. That's why you see this. Now, in order to really see the discretized states, you need to go to the quantum limit uh, of a superconductor. That is a superconductor with this gap comparable to Fermi energy. In this case, you see the discrete, uh, discretized quantized states, but none of them is at zero energy. And we know if we had one at zero energy, we would have this Marana, Fermi, uh, Marana uh, zero mode. So 
how do we generate a vortex Marana zero mode? And that is how to generate another billion vortex. And if you look at the quantization condition here, you know you have to turn this quantization condition from half odd integer to integer. And in order to do that, you need an extra phase that I call eta here. Imagine I can do that. Then the core energy would be quantized by an integer. So it would start with zero plus minus one and all that. And therefore the one that sits at zero with the quantum number mu here equal to zero is the Marana zero mode, which is a pair of degenerate states uh, that appears at the ends of the vortex line. So the question is how to get this extra phase eta. And obviously, if you think about it, it's easy to convince yourself there are two ways. One is to get this eta from the pairs themselves, and that is path A. You get eta equals to one from a chiral P plus IP topological superconductor or superfluid. This is the proposal of Reed and Green. And nature hasn't been kind to us. There are very few even candidate P plus IP topological superconductors. But there is a path B. The path B is to get this eta not from the pairs, but from the particle hole sector that is through the very phase of the helical Dirac fermions. So if I write the Dirac equation on curved space, such as I take a disk, and you see there is this phase, this wonderful phase factor coming out, and that's the spin berry phase. And that adds this half angular momentum in each of the spin species. So even in the normal state, now, if I take a particle going around the origin, I would pick up a half integer quantization. Now, if I make the Dirac fermion superconductor and then look at the vortex core, this is this minus one here that came from the Berry phase is exactly the eta I needed to make this angular momentum quantum number to be integer. And in this case, I would have a vortex core states, a sequence of vortex core states that are integer quantized and include the zero mode. And that's the Marana zero mode. So in this sense, the S-wave pairing of helical Dirac fermions will do. And this is indeed uh, what's behind the proposal of Fu and Kane that um, Vidya just talked about. Uh, you need a 3D strong TI with topological surface states, the helical Dirac cone, proximity uh, effect coupled to an S-wave superconductor, and that will pre Present to you a zero energy state as a vortex core state. However, this discussion also motivates a general uh, perspective of these physics is that what we need really is one superconductor. We don't need a hybrid structure. But this one superconductor should have a topological, a Z2 uh, topological band structure. So therefore, your starting point should be a Z2 topological metal. That is to say, uh, maybe a doped topological insulator. So both the bulk bands and the surface states are doped. Now, if you manage to make this guy superconducting, you would get the bulk states and you would necessarily induce a paired states uh, on the surface state, on the topological surface state. So this is a way of achieving a superconducting topological surface state. And once you have that, you have vortex Marana zero mode. So I want to emphasize that this is by no means a topological superconductor, not in the sense of the usual definition that we have uh, for topological superconductor to have a non-trivial topological environment. It is not that. It is an S-wave superconductor, but the topological aspects comes from the band structure. OK, now FTS really is such a candidate. It's a Z2. It has a Z2 topological band structure. And I want to emphasize the reason for this to happen is because, well, one can ask, why does it happen in uh, ion-based superconductors? There are various reasons. But one of the most, I think, basic reason is that ion-based superconductors are PD charge transfer metals as opposed to uh, uh, cuprates, which are PD charge transfer insulators. So the P bands are close to the Fermi level. And in FE, TE, SE, the tellurium atoms are big. So they hybridize the, the PZ orbitals between different surfaces really strongly hybridize. 
This pushes the PZ orbital further down towards the Fermi level, and therefore it crosses the D bands, and uh, of course crosses the Fermi level. So this causes a band inversion of odd parity PZ and DXZ band, and the SOC spin orbit coupling will then create a gap along the gamma Z direction. And this non-trivial Z2 invariant is the origin for generating topological surface states. But of course, this thing is doped. It's not exactly an insulator. So the normal state can be thought as a strong Z2 topological metal. And there is a single Dirac cone on the 001 Fermi surface. I said this very cavalierly. In fact, there is not a theory, a real theory that can produce all of this. The LDA calculation give you something that is uh, a bit off from this picture. Of course, uh, we would assume that perhaps the correlation effects that are so important in uh, the Tchaikovsky that causes the uh, renormalization of the bands that brings the FDA band, uh, uh, LDA band structure to this one that's what's measured experimentally. Okay, so now, uh, to go from that kind of understanding to actually observe these things in theory, you really would have to have all the stars line up and everything, but they did happen. This is the work that uh, Vidya mentioned by Pen Zhan, uh, who is gonna be talking tonight. And this is a, a groundbreaking work in my view that they use spin polarized RPES with uh, very high resolution and directly observe the Dirac cone topological surface states uh, with, with uh, spin orbit helicity. Now, uh, everything that they found is actually peculiar of FETESE, -E, which played a role in what I'm going to say later. The Dirac cone is about five millivolts below the Fermi level. And in fact, the bulk band has a tiny Fermi energy, 4.5 millEV of this whole band. Now, if they go below TC, they found that there is a gap, superconducting gap developing in the topological surface states. And that's a reason. Uh, well, that, I think that's evidence that we have for this new quantum state of matter, which is the superconducting topological surface states. Once again, this is not a topological superconductor. My experimental colleagues are very excited and wanting to call this thing a topological superconductor. It might be in some higher order uh, categories, uh, higher order definitions, but not in the conventional sense. But nevertheless, our discussion tells us if we apply a magnetic field, we should see Marana zero mode in the vortex core because of these superconducting topological surface states. And that indeed has been found. Uh, FTS, uh, you see the zero energy bound state, and that is a candidate Marana zero mode. And later on, uh, uh, Hannah Guri's group has this ultra high uh, resolution measurements that. Uh, makes it even more convincing. Of course, there are both vortices with and vortices without a zero energy mode. You can think of this as having both a billing and non billing vortices coexisting because of the inhomogeneity of the surface. Now, this is quite universal. I'd want to make an, a point that this is not just in FTS. This is FESE. FESE by itself doesn't have surface state, but if you interpolate this way, you get topological surface state. And then in the vortex, you see uh, the zero energy bound state. And it's even in the panictides. Again, this is also something I think, uh, is it video? Uh, or no, the, uh, uh, the first talk this morning also mentioned this uh, panictides, this 1144, which is a bilayer uh, ion panictides that has surface states. And very recently, they have observed also this zero energy bound state in the vortex core. So all of these are actually, if so far, the, 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 the criteria, which is a poor criteria, but it certainly is the first criteria, first step, is to see the zero energy bound state in STM. But however, the very first observation of a robust zero energy bound state in FETSE was actually made on top of access ions and was actually made about three years early in 2015. So the access ions in FETSE uh, are very well known. They are as grown, and they sit at the C4 symmetric sites, which is in the middle between four tellurium and selenium atoms here. And neutron scattering uh, studied this very carefully 
early on, uh, the uh, ion carries a spin orbit moment of about 2.5 Bohr magneton and points along the C-axis due to magnetic anisotropy. And they're not ordered, they're disordered. And the neutron scattering actually find they survive in the superconducting state and may have some coexistence of magnetic polarons in the superconducting state. Okay, so 2015, we thought uh, with STM, this is in collaboration with uh, uh, Shu Hen Pan's group, uh, we, we would just tunnel into these excess ions. The idea was to see if this will tell us something about the, uh, the nature of the pairing or the superconducting order parameter. But we found something quite astonishing. And this is the uh, STM curve. If you go away from this excess ion, you have a flat bottom S wave superconductor. But if you come to the ion, the excess ion, you see a zero energy peak. In fact, this is a zoomed in picture. This is a robust zero energy peak that um, only sets in below superconducting transition. And it's robust against the magnetic field. And there are even other evidence that tells us these, uh, this is not a usual magnetic impurity state. It's got a kind of topological origin. Um, and it's in fact, if you look at all the spectroscopy properties of this zero energy state, it is consistent with a Majorana zero mode, but in zero magnetic field. Here, I show this again. I want to actually make a point. If you look at Shuhan's data, this is a V-shaped density of states and minus five milliEV. And that is completely consistent with ARPES uh, having a Dirac crossing about five millivolts below the Fermi level. So this says indeed what's seen here is a superconducting topological surface state. But how would we have a zero bias uh, peak or zero energy bound state in zero magnetic field. And in fact, this reminds us of the uh, famous quote by Rabi when muon was discovered instead of uh, the anticipated uh, mesons, uh, who ordered that? And in particular, uh, is this really a bona fide Marana zero mode? So now our proposal is what I described in the very beginning that uh, there is a quantum anomalous vortex, a vortex in zero magnetic field that nucleates spontaneously around the interstitial magnetic ion without external magnetic field. And that hosts a Marana zero mode from the superconducting topological surface state. So we need to, of course, do a calculation to show that indeed in this case, it's better to have a vortex instead of a vortex free Yushiba state. And that I won't have time to describe in detail, but I can show you. So the, I can sketch uh, the philosophy is the red line is the whole band around gamma point, the bulk band. The blue one is the surface state. To get QAD, the quantum anomalous vortex, we work with the bulk bands, not the topo uh, superconducting topological surface state. And we took, took parameters from RPES and of course, the magnetic ion is put there with a exchange coupling to the total angular momentum of the quasi particle. And we do the whole thing on the disk uh, by solving the BDG equations in the presence of a vortex. Um, now, uh, a few words about the energy cost of the vortices. Basically, the main parts of two, part, uh, two, two contributions the core energy, which is really the penalty you pay for creating a vortex. Uh, uh, and also there is a vortex line tension, which is the line energy. And you can estimate this uh, for F, E, T, E, S, E. Here I want to, this is just BCS estimate, but you have experimental parameters. The main point I want to point out is the line tension is a function of E squared over delta. So. Being in the extreme quantum limit for FTS tells you that this number you can get is 2.5 milliEV per coherence length. So the line tension is very small. So the vortices are very floppy. They're easy to bend, to manipulate. And if you did the same thing for cuprates, you'll get something on the order of 800 milliEV. Okay. Now, the second thing, of course, is the core energy. The core energy is what you pay usually but because of the strong spin orbit coupling, you actually gain this energy. 
this is what gives the Lorentz force. And you can estimate this because we know the total angular momentum of an elemental vortex is the number of pairs times h bar. And now you can estimate the energy from the, uh, uh, from, from the uh, binding part. Now, when these two become comparable, you have a quantum anomalous vortex nucleation. So now you uh, when, when the binding energy becomes larger than the line energy, which you, you get this equation. And for short range exchange field, you see that all you need is the exchange coupling to be greater than the Fermi energy. And the very small Fermi energy, 4.5 millivolts for FTS is what's favoring this quantum anomalous vortex. And this is a, a co complete numerical calculation. Here we plot this binding energy as a function of the exchange field. On this side, you have the Yushiba vortex free states, but when the exchange coupling becomes stronger, larger than the Fermi energy, you have a quantum anomalous vortex spontaneous nucleation. In fact, there is a transition now going from Yushiba states to a vortex state. Okay. And now once we have the vortex, of course, we just couple that to the superconducting topological surface state. That is the blue line. Now you've got the extra Berry phase. You get zero mode, integer quantized core states with the zero mode. But for this set of parameters, the core states are clear from the, the uh, are cleared up from the vortex core. And that gives that rise to this very robust zero energy peak. And that compares very well to Shuhan's experiment. Okay. So if we have dilute magnetic ions, what we really have here is the em emergence of quantum anomalous vortex, anti-vortex matter at zero temperature. These are quantum phenomena uh, with zero external magnetic field, which might be a, a platform, a better platform or more advantage, uh, advantageous platform because we have a single material, no external magnetic field, and presumably, or in, at least in principle, you can manipulate these uh, ions uh, to achieve manipulation of Maurana zero mode. So uh, in the next five minutes, I'm going to turn around and show some new results uh, by focusing on two points. The first one is how general is this phenomena? If this is true in this as grown FTS with access ions, then if I just spray the surface with magnetic ion atoms, I should see this. That's one thing. Uh, the other thing I want to talk about is in addition to this zero energy peak, which seems to be the only experimental phenomena as of now, can you see more things to indicate that the uh, quantum anomalous vortex indeed exists? I will do these two things. So I'll go rather quickly. Um, this is from Princeton's group. Uh, they uh, did atomic deposition of ion atoms on, uh, on uh, lithium-111, which has been talked about quite a bit at the symposium. Uh, 111 has a Z2 topological band structure. In fact, yesterday we heard it's actually quite intriguing. And Hanaguri did the vortex measurement quite early on. And the blue line is away from the vortex. And the red one is on the vortex, at the vortex, in the vortex center. You don't see a zero bias peak. In fact, the vortex seems to be gapless. So because of the Z2 topological band structure is quite non-trivial, the vortices from the superconducting topological surface states are actually highly non-trivial here. Now, when they put the ad atom ion on top of lithium-111, they see that the vortices actually get cleared up. And you see this zero energy uh, peak at eight of the 27, I think, uh, access ions they looked at, they're at zero energy. And it may indicate that the exchange coupling uh, can actually clear out these uh, uh, gapless states in the uh, vortex in the absence of the magnetic ion. Now, more recently, uh, the uh, Hong Jingao and Hong Ding's group at IOP deposited FT uh, magnetic ions on the surface of FTS. Now, this is quite spectacular because now there are, we see two kinds of ad atom ions. There is what I call type one here that shows a zero energy peak just like what we would anticipate from a QAV nucleated at the magnetic ion. We also see type two ad atom ions. These guys show Yishiba states, right? No zero energy peak. 
we, this is actually parallel to what you see in adding a magnetic field. You see both topological vortices and non-topological vortices. Okay, so a closer look at this shows that um, the type one ad atom ions will have this zero energy uh, bound state. What's really interesting is if you do a map of the zero energy state, you see this uh, candidate Marana zero mode peaks away from the magnetic ion, which is a little circle. So this off-centered Marana modes, I'll come back in a bit to explain. Um, and these other type two, if you add a magnetic field, they actually split. So giving you a G factor about 0.9, very uh, reasonable. So it's comforting to see both. You do see Mishima states and you also see zero energy mode, presumably due to the vortices induced. Now, one, this sample is always inhomogeneous. So the trick is to collapse all of these uh, waterfall plot onto a single plot. You see in addition to a zero energy bound state, you see also other states. And if you look at these states, they are integer quantized. And in fact, it's about one millivolts times an integer, including zero. So this is really con uh, concrete, I would say one more evidence that indeed the ion induced a vortex because you see the vortex states. And in fact, you compare this to a magnetic field induced vortex where also these vortex core states are seen. And that's 0.6 times the integer. So you really just increase the mini gap of the vortex state by a factor of two. And they are completely analogous to one another. So therefore, I hope this proves there's a dual origin of the vortices and vortex Marana zero modes in ion-based superconductors with topological surface states. They can be induced by magnetic field or by magnetic impurity. And I won't have time to say this, but I'm just going to flash this. They could actually use the tip to turn an ion impurity that only shows Rishiba states, and you can push it in so that the state collapses and turns into a single uh, zero energy state. And this is a transition. In fact, it's also reversible from Rishiba to the quantum anomalous vortex state. And there is also a initial data for observing the interaction of a quantum anomalous vortex induced uh, Marana zero mode and a B field induced zero mode. Uh, as you see here, uh, this is a impurity induced zero mode and a vortex creeps in if you put this thing in the magnetic field and these two things fuse, you lose the zero energy state. And if you wait, this vortex hops away, the field induced vortex, they move it hops away and you recover what you had before. Okay, now, now let me just explain why the Marana zero mode can be off-centered. And that is because the impurity of the, the, the moment of the impurity spin could be counted away from the surface normal. center because of the breaking of the uh, rotation symmetry. And that kind of accounts for the experimental observation. A immediate consequence of this is if you then calculate the current distribution, you find that a magnetic QAV in general can be a dipole, uh, can have a dipole structure. In other words, if you calculate the magnetic field uh, on this side is pointing, let's say, up or down, and on the other side, it points in the opposite way. So the Z direction B field distribution is that of a dipole. Okay, now I'm coming to my last transparency. Uh, it was really exciting in the last couple of months, the group of Yihua Wang at uh, uh, Fudan University, uh, they have uh, the ability of doing scanning squid uh, measurement. And so, they are able to actually see these vortices directly because that's the only, re uh, I think, uh, sort of necessary condition for you to claim there is actually uh, what it, what it is vortices in this case. I'm just going to briefly flash these data. This is the diamagnetic susceptibility. You see the sample, which is a FESE TE flake. And then here, uh, the, the squid coil will pick up the uh, magnetic flux. 
the center three are zero field cooled, and they have to do a lot of experiment to make sure there are no uh, uh, magnetic field around. And you see different zero, zero field cooling will give you these vortex anti vortex pairs in zero magnetic field. And it's actually a stochastic phenomena because different at different times you might uh, nucleate these things at different ion impurities. And if you do this in the field, of course, you have vortex or anomalous vortex. Now, this phenomena is not seen if you use FESE. It's also not seen if you use niobium, a standard BCS superconductor, which they actually showed in this uh, wonderful plot. That if you first look at the stars, which is not from a niobium film, when you have no applied field or small applied field, you have no vortices. Right? You need a threshold, HC1, to actually see these things coming in for niobium. Now, the circles are for FTS. You do not need any external field, and they nucleate along the zero field line. And for small field, they, you have both vortices and anti-vortices. And of course, when the field becomes strong, you have predominant vortex or anti-vortex. And the magnetic field distribution going along a vortex anti-vortex pair uh, is shown here, which indeed exhibit this uh, dipolar character of a quantum anomalous vortex when the magnetic moment of the magnetic ions are canted away from the vortices. So that's all uh, I have to present today. And I'm going to just put up the uh, summary sheet. And there are a few things I didn't say. Uh, this quantum anomalous vortex, spontaneous or uh, nucleated vort vortices and magnetic impurities should appear also in topological superconductors if we had one, right? And the, there are things I haven't mentioned that these Marana or zero energy bound state tied to quantum anomalous vortices are indeed seen at at, uh, ion add atoms in monolayer FETESE and FESC field. And also more recently <clears throat> in uh, monolayer FETESE uh, along a line uh, atomic line defect, there are uh, zero energy bond state appearing at both ends of this atomic line defects, which is really saying that we can engineering or putting quantum structures, embedded quantum structures in FTS and observe true topological superconductors in reduced dimension. And more recently, there are also spontaneous Lorentz effect observed in bulk FTS. And that can be explained as due to uh, quantum anomalous vortices induced by axis ions. Uh, so I will stop here and thank you for your attention. Thank you very much for this really rich talk. Um, I see a hand raised by Andre. Uh, yes, Ming. Um, right. Uh, Zichang, I have a question about the energetics. Um, okay. So, so you've argued that uh, fundamentally the reason why the quantum anomalous vortex would exist mm -hmm. is because it's preferentially would bind to a local ad atom site and the energy of nucleating that vortex yeah. um, exceeds the line tension, right? Yes. In 3D. yes. Now, why would you have uh, two kinds of ad atoms? I mean, on the surface of it, the only okay. difference, I mean, the parameter that you care about is the ratio of something like EF squared over delta, right? Excellent. So you know, for yeah. a given material, Fermi energy is fixed. So why yeah. on the surface of let's say lithium iron arsenic would you have two kind of ad atoms? Yeah, excellent question. Um, in fact, it's the same question that one could ask, why do you have two kinds of vortices? I know there are uh, in magnetic field induced vortex. Uh, some of them have zero bias peaks and some of them don't. And there are many ways uh, they try to explain this. They meaning various groups trying to explain this. But the uh, most, I think, convincing explanation is because of the surface inhomogeneity due to the alloying, some parts may have topological surface state. Other parts may have a void or a different kind of surface state with different chemical potential. So therefore, you can think the type 1 ion atoms sits in a region where there are topological, well-defined topological surface states with low chemical potential. You know when the chemical potential is too high, the topological properties are gone. 
And the type two ad atom sits in the region where the uh, surface states are very nicely protected. They're just like what's been uh, observed by uh, our test. I see. And, and just to, sorry, just to, if I understood correctly, please correct me if I'm wrong, I'm trying to get sort of a, a two sentence summary of what you said, which is, <laughs> which was a lot of yeah. material. But in the first part of the talk, you argued that this non abelian vortices, the one that give you topologically non trivial zero bound Majorana states, in the first part of the talk, they come from the underlying Z2 invariant of the topology of the bands, correct? Yeah. The second part of the talk, you said, well, forget about the topology. Even if somebody gives you a plain vanilla superconductor like lithium iron arsenic, if you imagine putting add atoms with strong enough spin orbit coupling, you could have either Yi Shiba Rusino states or you could have this other non abelian states. Yes. And which one wins depends on energetics. And hey, it's possible that even in the same sample, you might have both. Is, is that yes. a fair, fair that's a, representation? That's a fair statement. In fact, the best would be. Uh, most convincing thing would be not to bother with the zero energy mode, but take a conventional superconductor that is not even, well, what we need is a superconductor that has strong spin orbit coupling. Right. Then you know that it's going to have some sort of a Z2 band structure. It's either trivial or non-trivial. So one can take a Z2 trivial band structure, but with strong SOC, take mm -hmm. that kind of superconductor, and then put the magnetic ion on it, deposit mm -hmm. on it. And one should see vortices. One should see a billion vortices, perhaps. Um, and then uh, if it's Z2 non-trivial, it's on the other side, then the vortices are actually not a billion. Yeah, you're absolutely correct. Thank you. Uh, any other questions? Can I, can I ask a question? Yes. OK. Yeah. Um, so, so, so you're saying, but isn't niobium that, oh, but you, but there's another additional uh, thing you need, right? You need the Fermi energy to be low. Is that true, ZK? Absolutely. Yeah. That's the, on the condition of nucleating. Absolutely. You're absolutely you right. Need, I need the Fermi energy to be, well, you need this, you don't really, you, you need the gaps to be comparable to the Fermi energy, right? You need uh, uh, superconductors close to the quantum limit. Okay, so yeah. so that, that's why an IBM diselenide won't do. Because... Right, right, right. So you In fact, said... a lot of superconductors, when they measure the vortices, they see a peak at zero, but that actually has no zero energy state. It's just a continuous state going through at zero. Sure, sure, but what I'm saying is for your particular scenario of a magnetic impurity, on some conventional yeah. superconductor. So you need the condition that you need strong spin orbit coupling and you, right. need, uh, you need the Fermi energy to be comparable to the superconductor gap. Those are two important conditions. Right, and, and that's why the, those two conditions are satisfied by FTS and, yeah. and uh, uh, lithium-111. Okay. In fact, if you put in the numbers for lithium-111, you would get it's in the quantum limit. Uh, there's another hand raised by Tamagna. Hi. Uh, uh, so I have, uh, I, I, I don't know if this is something you may have covered, but uh, uh, so when I'm thinking of the system, there's the Z2 inv invariant topological band structure, and then there's superconductivity. And then I guess if you add uh, the iron add atoms and you Consider the iron atoms. If you consider them to be represented by a Zeeman field, then uh, in the vicinity of these add atoms, there's a region where the field is magnetic field dominated, and surrounding it is a region where the gap is superconductivity dominated. I guess that by itself is enough, in at least in Fu and Kane's prescription, to give you zero energy bound states. So uh, uh, what I'm uh, okay. What I didn't get is what is the evidence for the vortex? Because all of these uh, experimental signatures, uh, the magnetic field, they would uh, pick up if there was a if there was a magnetic ad atom and uh, the, the ad atom was up in some ions and down in some ions. But what is the signature of the vorticity or the quantum anomalous vortex as okay. opposed to? Mm -hmm. Okay, very good question. 
Yeah. So as I was uh, emphasizing in this, I think here. Right. So here, this is this is uh, there is a magnetic atom somewhere here, and there's a line cut going through it. Right. And what you see is there are a sequence of quantized states near this magnetic atom. And this sequence of states are integer quantized. So minus L2, minus 1, 0, plus 1, plus 2. And they're quantized in a way that is exactly like what you see in magnetic vortices. So this is, this is just totally from experiment, right? Um, for example, you are not going to see if you just have a Zeeman coupling, right, in a conventional superconductor, what you see is you'll see uh, a Yishiba state, right? Not at zero energy, but you see a split, spin split state. Well, this is what you see. I see. So if you had... This is what you see exactly at type 2 ad atom. You see these two peaks. They are the primary Yushiba state that disperses away linearly with magnetic field. Whereas these states, oh, these states right here, this is field up to 8 Tesla. You don't see the zero energy mode move. Right. There will be slight motion of other states, right? But the zero energy peak would not move. I see. Yeah. So, and the, so the evidence for the, uh, the there being an anomalous vortex is that doubling from half to a full uh, delta square over EF. Right. That's that's additional evidence. Yeah. In addition to the zero one, it's the doubling. And I would like to. Uh, that's why I wanted to finish uh, with this page that you can directly observe vortices. This, see, uh, Ihua's group, uh, and I think they're in the process of putting STM tip on top of the squid coil, but without STM tip, he will say nothing about the core states. But what he said is that in zero field cooling for FTS, you are going to pick up these spontaneously nucleated vortex and anti-vortex pairs, and these Total flux, if you integrate this, actually is quantized. And the most amazing thing are these guys, if you can see my cursor, they carry one flux quantum, the, the red one, and the blue one, negative one flux quantum. And these are really genuine zero field, uh, zero external field quantized vortices. But of course, they have to come in pairs because there are no field. Therefore, the line, field line has to go from one to the other, to, from the vortex to the anti-vortex. So these are uh, evidence beyond. From a theoretical point of view, what is really, if you ask me, what is the fundamental reason that there are vortices coming in these class of materials? Um, it's because of the uh, magnetoelectric coupling, if you wish, the magnetoelectric effect, which is the essence of also quantum anomalous Hall effect is that you can have magnetic field, uh, you can have magnetic moment induce current circulation. That's the fundamental uh, origin. Uh, and we also have a short question from Igor. Yes, uh, so just uh, to, uh, to confirm that I've understood things correctly. So um, your explanation for type one and type two atoms is that at atoms is that they reside on two different types of superconducting state with TSS and without TSS. Exactly. Two kinds of surfaces, at least. Uh, two I think the well, bulk is... It's yeah. not necessarily two kinds of surfaces because, as I say, according to uh, this archive paper that I've just uh, attracted your attention to, is uh, that the uh, what we find is the state is inhomogeneous in the vicinity of the uh, transition between the trivial superconductivity and non-trivial superconductivity, and so the inhomogeneous it's like in cuprates, the electronic state is inhomogeneous, and you have islands of trivial and islands of non-trivial superconductivity on the same surface. Okay, yeah, yeah, that's. That's that's exactly correct. Yeah, Thanks. it could be even they are the surface states are always there, but the surface state themselves are actually inhomogeneous. Yeah. Right. Some yes. the, yeah. Some of the Dirac point is actually deeper. The, the Dirac gap actually they have a Dirac gap which varies with tellurium content. 
Exactly, exactly. That's what I'm saying, using yeah, yeah. to explain two so different behavior. We have right. experimentally quantified all that in that paper that- uh, I see. Know, the, Dirac, the size of Dirac gap is a function of tellurium and iron content in the vicinity of the transition. Excellent. Yeah, that should explain all these phenomena of having observing both kinds of uh, vortices. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Uh, thanks for an excellent talk. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. thank you. Nvidia? Um, yeah, very, very quickly. So Zeking, your statement about uh, strong spin-orbit coupling was a statement about the superconductor, not about the impurity, right? Not about the impurity. Although impurity induced a local, so it, it's called the elliott yafet uh, effect, uh, local spin orbit coupling, but that is right. not essential. Yeah, okay. Uh, I, yeah. Okay, yeah. thank you. Thank you all. Any any other questions? I guess, uh, <laughs> if not, I guess uh, we thank Zhijian and all the speakers very much for this uh, wonderful session. And we will continue in about in half hours with our night session.